This video was recorded on the Sapphire Pulse RX Vega 56 graphics card. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixel and today on the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel we are going to be taking an early look at a game called Close to the Sun. This is a game focused around first person exploration with both light, puzzle and horror elements. The game's developers were kind enough to send over an early demo build so it's important for us all to keep in mind that everything you are about to see here is pre-release gameplay and subject to change. This demo also only includes the prologue, chapter 1, chapter 2 and chapter 6 of the game, so obviously I can only comment on how the story is told and not how the story plays out as a whole. Also, it's worth pointing out that unlike our normal gameplay videos, I am not going to be including any performance metrics. I have played through the game at 1440p on the high preset using the Sapphire Pulse RX Vega 56 graphics card with a 60Hz VSync enabled. This should result in an extremely smooth video provided that we hit the 60fps target and we should also avoid any screen tearing which becomes a real problem whenever you play something that contains a lot of flickering lights, as this game does. But anyway, enough about all that, let's have a look at the game itself. In Close to the Sun, you play as a young lady named Rose who arrives aboard the Helios after receiving a letter from her sister Ada. The Helios at this point is supposed to be the biggest ship to ever set sail and it was designed and built by Nikola Tesla himself to be a place where all the world's greatest minds could come together in the hopes of building a better future. Unfortunately for Rose, as you start to explore, it quickly becomes apparent that things aren't going quite as planned and you will now need to try and reach your sister Ada and escape to safety. Now, it goes without saying that this is firmly planted in an alternative version of history. According to the developer's website, this game takes place towards the end of the 19th century, but this time around, Tesla has been able to gain the upper hand over his rival Thomas Edison. Unfortunately though, this war with Edison has left Tesla more than a little bit paranoid, which is something that becomes immediately apparent upon reaching the check-in area. However, that appears to be the least of your worries because the whole ship is on a lockdown due to an unexplained quarantine. Quarantine? What have you got yourself into, Ada? The story plays out mostly through examining objects, radio communications, and what can be best described as flashbacks or visions. Based on what's available in this demo build, I have to say that I think the developers have done a really decent job here. I'm actually going to allow a few moments of gameplay to play out right now and this is from very early on in the game, maybe 10 or so minutes in, so I would really not consider anything that you're about to see uh, any kind of spoiler. Once this section plays out, I will come back and talk a little bit more in depth about the gameplay and touch on one of the issues that I do actually have with what I have played so far. So here we go, enjoy. Archer calling any survivors in this frequency. Is anyone out there? What the? I repeat, this is lead researcher Archer calling for any survivors Anything? on this frequency. Is anyone? Ada. Rose? Ada! Holy shit, Rose! Ada! What the hell are you doing here? Wait, what? Ada, you told me to come. I've got your letter right here. That... that doesn't make any sense. I didn't write you any letter, Rose. But, but never mind. There's been an accident. Or sabotage. It, it doesn't matter. We need to get off this ship. That's what the quarantine is about? Ada, what the hell is going on? Rose, listen very carefully. We really need to leave. It's spreading all... It's Ada! Ada! after the sun itself, a source of almost unlimited power. This is a safe space for those with an open mind and a talent for the scientific arts to expand the limits of human endeavor. Away from prying eyes and cynical money men, here all that matters is progress as we reach for the very stars themselves. It is our floating home and the cradle of mankind's technological evolution. You walk within the very future of the human race, and you are most, most welcome. Creepy ship full of scientists in the middle of the ocean. 
What could possibly go wrong? Anyone? What the hell was that? So yeah, I, I think it's fair to say the game artistically shares a lot of things with Rapture from the original Bioshock. Most people will put this down to the art deco aesthetic and that feeling of steampunk kind of tech or even the nautical themes, however I think that this thread runs much deeper than just the visuals. Even the voice acting gives off that Bioshock vibe along with the characters seemingly flawed mental states. It's really hard to describe what I mean but I guess what I'm trying to say is that the people in this world are more like caricatures than real people. Everything is exaggerated, it's a style that I personally love, I mean it's not too real but it's also not too fake. This is something that we used to see a lot more frequently in video games but has become somewhat of a lost art over the years, and yet Close to the Sun manages to nail it almost perfectly. While the art assets are generally impressive across the board, it is most certainly the developers mastery of materials and shaders that elevate this game's visuals to a level rarely seen not only from a small studio, but even the big triple A's. When you combine this with some solid sound design and a great use of lighting, you end up with a gorgeous game. And while the demo did have a few frame rate oddities from time to time, the overall performance profile is extremely impressive considering the complexity of the scenes that we do see. And finally, I want to get onto the elephant in the room, and that is that this is a horror game. Now, full disclosure, my opinion is likely to be at least a little bit biased here because I really don't like horror games. I just don't. Personally, I don't find being scared all that fun, and I get scared very easily in video games. With that said, Close to the Sun never actually managed to make me feel all that uncomfortable. Now obviously, there is a certain level of subjectivity whenever we talk about fear or what people find scary. But as someone that has chickened out of almost every single horror game that I have ever played, and even some games that aren't even considered horror titles, I think that maybe, just maybe, there could be a problem here. To be fair, I have never really had a problem with loud bangs and jump scares. For me, it's that feeling of impending doom, you know that feeling of terror? It, it, that really gets deep under your skin, that's what usually cripples me. And that is also what appears to be lacking in Close to the Sun, at least in the demo, and I think I can explain why. There are quite a few, let's just say, minor jump scares throughout the demo, and these include stuff like light bulbs blowing up, doors slamming, and even people jumping out at you. Ah! What the hell? Hey! Hey! There is even a section towards the end of the demo where you have a chase sequence where a lunatic with a knife is trying to murder you. These are the same kind of things that we see in almost all horror games. Amnesia, Outlast, Resident Evil 7 and Soma for example all employ each one of these elements. The problem is that jump scares and chase sequences are not the core of a horror experience, they are simply the catalyst to true fear, and with all that built up tension and anxiety the reaction to these things just kind of falls a little flat. Part of this is due to the player's lack of freedom, part of it is down to the scourge feeling very systematic, and a lot of it is down to the very binary failure state. When you're being chased for instance, you either escape the area or you get caught and die. If you die, you respawn right before the chase starts and you have another go, so even if this gets your heart pumping the first time, I doubt it will on the second and third or maybe even fourth attempts, so these additional attempts just end up feeling like free respite. Also, total random jump scares, I, I think they're pretty cheap and personally I do not like them at all. Sure you can make me jump, but that does not mean that they are scurry if you have not built up that fear before triggering them. 
If games like Amnesia, Outlast and Resident Evil 7 are haunted houses, then Close to the Sun is more like a ghost train and it's difficult to let your mind wander while you're strapped in for the ride. I would even go as far to say that I found the original Bioshock much more terrifying in its moment to moment gameplay than I did Close to the Sun. It's important to note though that this is not necessarily a bad thing and personally for me I'm actually quite happy about it. I just worry that when you market yourself as a horror game, you need to make sure that horror works otherwise you risk disappointing your audience. Now I want to be clear, I have really enjoyed this demo and I am looking forward to playing the full game when it's released. Close to the Sun is a beautiful first person exploration game with great voice acting and storytelling. The worlds feel believable while remaining unnatural and there's definitely a level of intrigue that most certainly drives my desire to want to push forward. While there are most certainly horror elements here, I would definitely not go as far to call this a horror game. That said, please do bear in mind that I have only played the demo and I have not played the full game, so my comments on the horror aspects may not be actually accurate to the full release. I will personally be taking the time to play the full release as soon as I can get my hands on it, and I do believe that most people should enjoy what is on offer here, because this is looking like it's going to be a great game. But anyway, that is all I've really got time for today, but before you go, how about checking out one of these other videos? Also, if you are new around here, you should consider slapping that subscribe button to get notified of our future videos. Either way, from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will catch you later. Bye bye. And yeah, definitely check out one of these videos. You know you want to. They're awesome. Honestly, I, I made them the great. I promise you. Okay. Bye bye.